Hello everyone, I'm Ira Mullet from Forest River. Welcome to another how-to video. Today we'll be featuring how to properly winterize your water pump and your water system on a Platinum Wildwood FSX. So the first thing you want to do is make sure all your tanks are drained. So on this unit I'm going to start with the fresh tank. So what you'll see here on this unit you'll see it has a cap for your fresh tank drain. You just want to take this cap off and make sure all your water is drained from the system. Now on some units, you'll see a valve here instead of a cap. On this specific Platinum FSX, you have a cap for your, for your valve. All right, so the next thing you wanna do after your fresh tank is drained, you wanna come inside your RV and locate your water pump switch. You wanna turn this water pump switch on and you're gonna hear the water pump kicking in. So with the water pump on, you wanna locate and open your faucets you want to let all the water out of the system until the system is dry. So we see air purging out of the, the, the faucet. And then you want to do the same thing for your cold side. Um, and you want to do the same step for each individual faucet in the RV, including the outside kitchen if there is one, or your outside shower or spray port. All right, so after you've successfully removed all the water from the water system, from the previous step, what we just did on the inside of the coach, you want to come outside and locate your low point. So your low point uh, drain is right here on this unit, on this platinum unit. Um, and as I stated before on the fresh water tank, some of them you'll have a valve, others will have a cap. So for this one, you're just going to remove both caps on your low point drains. And you're going to want to let all your water out of your water system before proceeding to the next step. All right, so after the water has been removed from your water systems and your caps are back on your low point, you wanna locate your water heater access panel and your bypass valves. So on this unit, your water heater is located underneath your kitchen sink. So as you see here, I already removed the access panel that was in front of this. And your water heater is located underneath. You'll see the bypass valves right here. To bypass your water heater before continuing to winterize your unit, your valves should be facing in this direction. If these valves are facing this way towards your water heater, that means your water heater is no longer bypass. So make sure these valves are facing this direction, the hot and the cold side on the bottom. All right, so I know I just got done telling you to bypass your water heater on the inside of the coach, um, but it is, however, essential to winterize your water heater during this process. By doing that, you simply open up your water heater door Locate your pressure release valve and you want to release all the pressure out of the water heater before you continue. After all your pressure is released from the, uh, from the pressure release valve, you want to locate your anode rod. Remove this anode rod and let all your water drain from the water heater. After all the water is drained from the water heater, you want to replace your anode rod with a new one or if the current one isn't too, uh, too bad in shape, you can reuse that one as well. Okay, so moving on, uh, we just removed most of the water out of the low points. However, we're gonna do an added step to this process by applying 20 PSI of air pressure to the city water connection and going inside and opening all your faucets just to make sure all water has been eliminated from the water system before we apply antifreeze. So in this process, I'll be using a blowout plug and a valve. Um, you can also get this blowout plug at most of your major retail stores. Um, if you don't have one like this, this one will work just as well. So now that we have air applied to the system, 20 PSI, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna open all your faucets and remove all the water from the system. All right, so back inside the unit, we got 20 PSI of air applied to the water system. We're gonna open each valve. After you get done with your hot or cold side, you want to switch sides and do the same thing. After this faucet, you want to do the same thing for the rest of the faucets in the unit, including the toilet.
All right, so after you complete the inside, opening all your faucets, your toilet to make sure all the water is removed from the system, make sure you also do the same thing for the outside, whether it's your outside shower, if you have a spray port, outside kitchen. This may vary by floor plan or brand. Just make sure you do that as well. Also, just a reminder, if your unit is equipped with a water filter, you want to remove the water filter from the canister and put the canister back in place before you proceed to put antifreeze in your system. All right, before moving on into the antifreeze for the fresh water lines, we're just going to quickly blow out our black tank flush line to make sure all the water is removed from that system. By doing that, you just want to apply some pressure, about 20 PSI as well, to the black tank flush until you just hear a constant air coming out, no more water, and you turn it off, and you just winterize your black tank flush. All right, so moving on, we just got done removing all the water out of the water system using 20 PSI compressed air. Now we're back inside the coach. We are going to be looking for your water pump, your winterization hose, and your valve. So on this coach, it is behind, uh, underneath your refrigerator. And one way to locate these is a lot of our brands have started putting your antifreeze inlet uh, stickers on the front of the access panels, indicating that's where your water pump is. So I already loosened these screws up, so I'm just going to remove this access panel. And my water pump is going to be located right behind um, this access panel. So right where I need it is the winterization hose. I'm going to pull this out. And there's going to be a valve back here and that I want to turn and what this valve is going to do is going to take my pump intake from my pump from fresh tank to this hose to allow me to draw from my jugs of antifreeze. So after locating your hose and switching the valve to winterization mode, you want to take this cap off or some brands you may have a valve here as well. This one you have a cap and you want to take your RV and marine grade potable antifreeze. Make sure this is potable antifreeze. And you want to take your hose and just put it into your bottle of antifreeze. You want to now locate your water pump switch again, turn on your water pump, and that allows antifreeze to be distributed throughout the system um, and all your faucets. All right, so we got the winterization hose and the bottle of antifreeze. But before we turn on the water pump, uh, make sure all your faucets, all your fixers are turned off to minimize wasting antifreeze. Also, the amount of antifreeze that you may use depends on the floor plan you have or a brand specific unit that you may have. Uh, bigger coaches obviously take more antifreeze. So with that being said, we're going to turn on your water pump. We're going to let the water uh, pressurize or the antifreeze pressurize. Then we're going to come and we're going to locate our faucets. And we're going to turn off Turn on the cold side or hot side, whichever you prefer. And we're going to let a nice steady flow of antifreeze out of the faucet. I'm going to turn it off. We're going to switch over to the other side. We're going to do the same thing. Make sure you get a nice steady flow of antifreeze and you're good to go. You want to repeat this for every faucet inside the coach as well as outside. All exterior uh, fixers such as your ports, uh, outside showers, outside um, a kitchens, whatever you may have on the outside of your RV, you want to do the same thing. Follow me, we'll go to the bathroom. So as you see here, we're going to do the same steps on the bathroom sink. Let a nice steady flow of antifreeze. Same with the other side. Alright, so for the toilet, you want to let a nice flow of antifreeze throughout. Make sure you got a good flow. But when you turn this off, you want to make sure you leave the antifreeze on top of the lid just as it is. This prevents or minimizes the chances of that lid freezing up and somebody coming in, stepping on the pedal and breaking the pedal. So just leave that antifreeze right on top just the way it is. All right, for your shower, you just want to do the same thing. You just want to open each individual side, hot, cold. Let's get a nice flow of antifreeze. Don't forget your exterior fixers. This is the exterior shower. So the final step to applying antifreeze to refresh water systems is you want to just briefly open your low point. And if you have a valve 
we just briefly open the valve just to get a nice steady antifreeze stream. If you see that's a nice color of pink, you turn it back off and do the same thing for the other one. What this does is this just ensures that if there is any water sitting on the bottom of these valves or these caps, that they won't get froze shut or damage the rings or the, the seals and the caps. All right, so just because we're done winterizing the fresh water lines, we're not quite complete yet. So what you also want to do is go outside and locate your drain, your wastewater drain uh, terminations. Uh, this is my gray and this is my waste. And you just want to open these up and make sure all your water is out of the system, both gray and black. All right, so wrapping up this procedure uh, on winterization, um, there's a couple other steps we've got to do to finish this thing up. Uh, the first thing you want to do is take a, take a clean towel, um, place it underneath your antifreeze jug. Now keep in mind my water pump is still on. One trick you want to do uh, so you to avoid too much spill is you want to open up a faucet. What this does is it releases the pressure of the hose. What you want to do then is you want to take this hose out of the jug and it's pulling uh, out of this hose so you won't have uh, antifreeze spilling all over the place. I'm going to put this cap back on nice and tight. Turn off your faucet and at this point you can also turn off your water pump. Next you want to do is you just want to put your winterization hose back in place and reinstall your access panel. Another thing you want to do before you wrap this up completely is wipe off any antifreeze that may have uh, spilled into your sink, um, including your, your showers, um, your lav sinks. Make sure you wipe all that up. Then if you have extra antifreeze and you want to winterize your waste system, you just simply take your antifreeze and you just pour it down your P-traps. You do that in each P-trap to prevent freezing in your P-traps and also goes down into your waste tanks. All right, thanks for watching another how-to video by Forest River. If you may have any more questions uh, regarding winterization or winterization of certain appliances such as clothes washers or refrigerators and so on, uh, we recommend looking at your owner's manual or go on forestriverinc.com. All right, before you leave, we do have some tips on fresh water systems when you're camping. First things first is you want to have a water regulator. This one is a 40 to 50 PSI uh, water pressure regulator. You want to have a filter. You can get this filter and a lot of these components at your major retail stores. With the filter, if you get this filter, you usually get this, uh, uh, this kind of a flexi flexible hose that prevents kinking when you're hooked up. And also what we found that is very helpful is this hose, this is a flex hose that extends up to 50 foot. So this is great for storage. You don't have to worry about this big old hose shoving into your, um, to your compartment storage area. Uh, it folds up nice and neat, put in a tote, you're good to go. And one last thing, is to prevent your dogs or your kids from running through here and knocking, knocking your hose or making a kink. And you can get this 90 degree elbow at your major retail stores to basically prevent the kinks or prevent your water hose from coming straight out and causing trips or hazards. Thank you again and have a nice day.